Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, write your name in and out in the chat if you would, if you're first time visitor and who invited you, and <laughs> just, just welcome. Um, then we get to the then we get to the uh, sanctuary part, and once we have opening prayer, it got oh, man, God has just been amazing. The amount of speakers and diverse backgrounds of the speakers that we have is just absolutely amazing. The testimonies are still amazing, Dr. Kyle. I still remember. A year of living dangerously. <laughs> I mean, uh, God showed up. We're, we're not smart enough to do what he's done for four and a half years, but he shows up every single time. So after this opening prayer, there'll be a speaker introduction. We got music today from our speaker. Looking forward to that. Then there's a word, and the word has always been powerful. Every week, no matter what, no matter who, always powerful. Then we do our prayer requests, and then we do closing prayer. And then we exit to the foyer where the tent master lives. Now, today we have a different tent master. Uh, I'm not going to say they both wear the same uh, uh, suede shoes, but um, this tent master will be giving us the, the the conference reports, the speak reports, and all that kind of good stuff. Kenny, can you see this? Am I in trouble? I see it, and I'm stunned. Okay, all right, all right. I can move on now. I'm, <laughs> I'm too far away for you to get me, though, but much love. Anyway, we got uh, our, our tent master of the day is, is Chancellor uh, Kenny Anderson. Uh, my learning for this week was tripping on something that I couldn't do nothing about. And I know you guys' faith is probably a lot stronger than mine, but sometimes I get to the point where sleep is hard or a challenge is just, man, how do I solve this? And it's already always so big. This week, I couldn't do nothing about it. Couldn't solve it. Ain't that smart. Couldn't talk my way around it or crack jokes around it. It was just sitting there looking at me. And this was my verse for this week. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. And my testimony this week is I could do nothing about it. It's, it's Sabbath. God solved it by Thursday evening or Friday morning. But Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there were no answers. And I had nothing. Um, and I just said, okay, Jesus. I don't know how if I don't know if y'all ever go through something where all you can say is the name of Jesus. That's all you got. And you repeat it all day because you don't know what else to say. That was the week. But this verse was 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 my go-to verse this week. God, you got to give me peace and I gotta stay connected to you because I can't figure none of this stuff out. So that was my learning this week. Today, we're going to have a proper intro in a little bit, but we have Dr. Cleveland Hobdy, no longer ABD, but show enough, show enough. Dr. Cleveland Hobdy, uh, minister, musician, uh, leadership focus, uh, just, just a powerful person uh, with us, and we're going to introduce you to him in a little bit. Uh, the, prayer, the prayer warriors, who's got the report for the prayer warriors this week? I'm going to keep it short this week, Eric, because... You stole our thunder. I'm sorry. That was our verse. <laughs> we shut up. <laughs> we talked today about trust, and I asked everyone to bring a verse, a scripture, a song that um because we've been going through so much, and how do we oh. how do we trust and how mm. do we as believers show trust? Mm when we are going to funerals and going to sick rooms and, and all of that. And so that was the verse that was so interesting. Several people came with that verse, <laughs> Isaiah 26, verse three. And of course we added to that Proverbs three, where we're reminded to trust in the Lord. Problem that we have with it is with our whole heart. Have mercy. Like leaning on our own understanding, right? And um, acknowledging him in all of our ways. So we prayed um, for that as well. But our theme this week was trust. <clears throat> and we um, had the privilege of hearing a short testimony um, that I think we're all going to hear from Jacqueline Blake, who happens to be my sister, um, a testimony that I had never heard um, about when she didn't trust. Have mercy. But yet God, who is a good God, he's good. He's good to me. He's good at being God, and that's why we can trust him with our whole hearts and have peace when we do so. Have mercy. 
Join us every week. Send us your prayer requests. We stay on it all week long. That's awesome. That's the number right there, the Zoom meeting. Same one. They'll let you in. It happens 45 minutes before here. And that is a praying group of people. And they pray for us all the time. Thank y'all. Keep them prayers coming. Um, oh, one if, more thing. And today we had a guest. We had a guest um, who has never been on Zoom worship, but she was visiting someone. And she had a prayer request. And I'm sharing this because it's an important one for all of us. Uh -huh. She had a request for a ministry around diabetes prevention, type 2 diabetes prevention for Black people. And we just want to, we prayed for that ministry and we just want to pray for all of us as we did for us, pray for all of you that we will have the self-discipline, the the the, the self the discipline, the self-control that the Holy Spirit gives us, one of the fruits of the Spirit, so that we can manage our health mm -hmm. in ways that give glory and honor to God. To God, everything given glory. And our people need that stuff. <laughs> we... Who help us all the ghost. So uh, yeah, that crew right there, that's the Zoom meeting. They'll let you in every week, 45 minutes before we start. Now, if you want to look at some of the blessings that have hit this place, uh, we get rocked every week, every single week. This is, uh, we're up to 75, 70 videos. Yeah, 70 videos. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Dr. Dykes, we get a process faster than we used to. <laughs> Uh, but if you just want to see some of the speakers that are on here, like after this, a bunch of people just, you know, say, let, let, let me get some more of this and they'll click on and watch till that sun goes down or they just during the week, you need some encouragement, but go to YouTube and just type in zoom family worship. Just go to YouTube, type in zoom family worship. When you see the three crosses, click on it and subscribe. And it's just there and you'll be connected to all the uh, you know, all the videos that have been there, uh, <laughs> there are pretty much flamethrower messages every single week. And we know who that is. We know that's God. That's not a, that's not by accident. And none of us are smart enough to orchestrate it. Uh, people volunteer, uh, we're one of the higher paid conferences. So they do it out of the goodness of their heart and their ministry for Jesus Christ. But every single week, YouTube, Zoom Family Worship, click on the three crosses. Um, the chat feature you guys have used to minister to people for the last four and a half years. Uh, there was a person that came on, told their story, and they were kind of going through it and they were trying to get something done. And quietly, somebody in chat connected with them help them solve problems. There's a ton of that. We hear that all the time. Uh, but the chat feature you guys have used to bless people, thank you, thank you. Uh, Y'all bless a lot of people, give advice, help out, and don't tell nobody. You know, they don't come back on, oh, we help somebody. Y'all just quietly connect and bless people. And I know that's Jesus Christ working in you. So thank you for that. Um, as usual, I, I do you know, kind of scour the net to find things. And <laughs> I love this guy, Kevin Carter, I believe it is. Um, anyway, he forgot where he was. Angels we have heard on high. Sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply. Thank you. All right. 
For all you speakers and performers out there, let's remember where we are. Sometimes some of that stuff runs together. Anyway, the mute button, please use it. We've heard fun, fun things for the last uh, four and a half years. Uh, prayers, food, a couple of people getting fussed at. Uh, please use the mute button. We got some people that that will help uh, if possible. Uh, one of y'all sent me a link to this young man. And what scared me, I went on YouTube and listened more to him preach. And his name is Rawls. I can't, one of y'all remember and tell me which one of y'all sent me this. But listen to this young man. This one took me out. And I listened to a bunch of his sermons. He's been preaching since he's about four years old. Just check this out. And y'all can look him up. I was just a, a I want somebody to know this morning that God can bless you in the middle of a mess. God used the struggles of Joseph's life to tell the story about his glory. Watch this. The only way to get juice from an orange, you must squeeze it. If you want to get oil out of the olive, you gonna have to squeeze it. If you want to get the tooth out of the tube, you gonna have to squeeze it up. Y'all see where this is going up. In order for God to get the glory out of your life, God's gonna have to put the squeeze on you. But I'm so glad today that Paul said that this slight affliction is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That, that one took me out. I wasn't ready. Uh, if go on YouTube, his name is Rawls. I don't have the first name, but but uh, after this week of getting squeezed, that young man, I was running around the, the family room because the juice was definitely out. Testimony today from my big sister Jackie. Uh, uh, Jackie, I try to steal pictures. I go on everybody's you know <laughs> social media and try to rip pictures, and I know that I was blessed and very fortunate and honored to be interviewed on your radio show. Uh, but I found somebody on there that had more hair. So Jackie, <laughs> just just we we want we want to hear your testimony, sis. Thank you, Eric, for letting me share what God wanted me to share. And I guess it's an example of how God sometimes has to put the squeeze on you. Yeah. When you're not so willing to do what He wanted you to do. So today it's reminded me of something that happened a, a while ago, over 40 years ago, after our firstborn child came into the world. I felt impressed that God wanted me to give him the middle name of Elijah. Mm. Well, this was in the 1980s and Elijah was not a popular name. So I shied away from obeying what the spirit was telling me to do. Mm. Jonathan was a popular name back then. Jason was a popular name, but not Elijah. So I shied away. I did not obey. Even though Elijah has significance for me because I felt that Perhaps my son's generation might be the generation to herald Jesus' second coming. And like Elijah in the Old Testament, perhaps our son would be a spokesperson for God. Mm -hmm. So even though I saw the value and the significance in that name, I shied away from doing what the Spirit told me to do. I did not obey. Mm -hmm. Instead, I gave him the middle name of Eli a form of Elijah. Elias, E-L-I-A-S. Well, that was 40 years ago. And I never told anyone about that impression that God gave me. That was private between mm -hmm. me and God. Well, 30 years later, a little baby boy came into our family, our grandson, my son's son. Now, mind you, I had told no one about that story, the impression. And without any input from me, the baby boy was given the name Elijah. I was stunned. I was shocked. It was, if, it was as if God was saying to me, what you did not do 30 years ago, I am bringing it to pass. And our little grandson Elijah has a birthday today. He's 10 years old today. So I've learned that God can take what is private and make it public. God knows how to deal with my hesitancy and my disobedience and to speak to me in ways that squeeze me. 
<laughs> so I know what the message that he's trying to give to me. And I felt impressed to share this story with you today on Elijah Blake's 10th birthday. Ah, thank you, sis. Thank you. Uh, real quick, you know, when you just said that, um, it's like God was persistent. He wasn't even mad at you because you, he said, I'm going to keep the blessing coming at your family. That's amazing. God, you know, sometimes we have a picture of God that God is this, he's waiting to crunch us when we, when we don't do it, but he's persistent. So you still got an Elijah in your lineage. <laughs> God did it. Off the chain. Off God the chain. did it. Hallelujah. Off the chain. Guys, this, this just says the last thing that we were told to always point out as a family was how this thing ends. Um, it doesn't end. And I always say it every week, but they made us promise. Jerry and Pops made us promise that we would always leave with this focus. It doesn't end with this election. However we, whoever we support, whichever direction is going. It doesn't end with, with economics. It doesn't end with, um, I try not to upset too many people, but it doesn't end with the number of uh, 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 baptisms or conferences and who's running for whatever. All the stuff we get caught up in you know, the political stuff and the my eye versus your eye, that kind of stuff. It doesn't end there. It ends at this spot in Revelation 7, 9. This is down to Revelation. It says, after this, I looked and saw a multitude too large to count. That means it's going to be a whole bunch of people there. And I know we talk about the narrow road, but there's going to be millions. and mi Look up the holy city. And one of y'all did last week. It's like 1,500 miles each direction width, top, whatever. And I've been trying to figure out how that city's in there. Are we on tiers? Do we up against the wall? I don't know. Anyway, they don't let me think too often. But this number is going to be so huge from every nation, tribe, people, and tongue. Some 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 people that, that clap when they go to church. Some people that don't move when they go to church. Some people that dance when they go to church in their culture. Everybody's going to be listed here. Every nation, tribe, and kindred. And, and and standing before the throne and the Lamb. Now, that's our one thing we all going to be doing together is looking at Jesus. It says, all of us, because I'm claiming that. With the blood, I am claiming this. We're standing there wearing our white robes, holding palm branches in our hands. And in other verses, we're casting our crimes before Jesus. I plan on standing next to you. And this is how it ends. So this week, no matter what we're up against or the challenges that that we got to go through, no matter what that is, um, let's not forget that this is how it ends. It doesn't end with the foolishness that we see on television or comes across our browser. It ends with no more pain, nothing bad, not one more ill thought or feeling throughout each week. Uh, uh, live with Jesus forever. That's how they told us to end it. That's how it ends. So we are, uh, we're just blessed to be together. And family, thank you for what you guys have done for all the rest of us for four and a half years. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, For, for opening prayer, and uh, Chancellor Anderson, I think you're on here, correct, sir? I think you are I'm trying to see. Are are you on, Kenny? Yes, sir. Are you ready for me? Well, what I'm what I was thinking because uh, Dr. Hobdy is going to do the music is before and after. So I was thinking, could you do opening prayer and kind of introduce who our speaker is going to be? I can do both things. Absolutely. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to call upon your name. We're grateful for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We're thankful in this moment, Lord, for all that you have been to us. And we rest on the promises that you have provided for each of us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. 
These are very challenging times that we're living in. But help us not to simply focus on those challenges. Help us to never forget that you are God of great and abundant blessings. And we're the beneficiaries of those because of your love, your mercy, and your grace. Bless this fellowship today. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Eric, I'm glad you punctuated that with prayer because I was reminded with that image that you showed me, I have to be real careful about what I post on social media. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> I'm going to invite my assistant to uh, join me at this moment and uh, give the introduction for our speaker on today. Uh, our speaker is no stranger to this fellowship, and uh, we're always honored and delighted to have him as part of the fellowship. In fact, he is part of the original Board of Elders for Zoom Family Worship, yeah. and we honor him with his excellence as it relates to his um his leadership in so many ways. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Cleveland Hobdi III. It just sounds good for some reason. <laughs> and I celebrate as a human being, as a educator myself, excellence in education and people who choose to continue that marvelous journey. Dr. Hobdi is a pastor, disciple maker, speaker, leadership consultant, he focuses on things like organizational leadership. He's also a very gifted singer and musician, as we've heard before. He's provided pastoral care in many states from East Coast to West Coast over the past 30 plus years. He's a dynamic public speaker and leader with strong communication skills and a proven record of generating and building strong organizational and community relationships managing projects from concept to completion, designing educational strategies, and coaching individuals to success. He leads team and strategic processes that result in organizational growth, and he has worked towards providing solid financial direction for those who are interested in things like fundraising and fiscal responsibility. I shared that because oftentimes when people speak the person introducing them will stand up and say, a person who needs no introduction. And sometimes I'm the beneficiary of that introduction and I'm looking around the audience and saying, I don't know half the people in this audience. So you better <laughs> give them a decent introduction. I hope pastor, elder, Dr. Hobby, that I've done you justice today by presenting you before this amazing group of individuals, regular members, as well as visitors. The next voice that you will hear today be the voice of Dr. Cleveland Hobby III. Well, good afternoon, family. How are you guys doing today? Blessed. It is a blessing to be with you on this day as we give God the praise, all the glory and all the honor. And uh, we've gotten set up here and I was at the church and they certainly had something to do at church. I said, all right, we're by. <laughs> so I ran to my sister's house, who doesn't live too far away. <laughs> Pastor, you're going to join us? No, 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 no. Here's a link to the, to the prayer line. Come join us on Zoom Family Worship. But as I think about the privileges of being here in this fellowship and all the opportunities that God has given us, I'm just honored to be selected uh, to join this august list of messengers that comes to serve each Sabbath. Truly, this is a church in the image of what God wanted about it. And I, and I said, Lord, he gave, I believe he gave me something. I can't help, can help put this all in perspective. And uh, when I sing a little song, I, I, I go to a, a, a church that used to be conservative. And uh, we are, they're coming out of it. <laughs> the song I'm singing now, I can sing it here, but I know I couldn't sing it there. But they're such lovely people and they're taking change gradually. And uh, we're just, uh, I, my, my, my senior pastor, Jeremiah Sapolin said, he said, uh, no, no, what you do is do the song and then apologize later. But <laughs> at any rate, I'm gonna share this screen here and we're gonna see what we can do here. 
to do a song. If you would allow me to share the screen, that'd be wonderful. Okay, let's try this now. So we're not there yet, but I know we're going to get there. Okay, let's try this again. I want to re-record and then send it to you, but try, try I tell you what, I have a different it, song. It, I'm gonna have another it, song. It works. It's you should be on now. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> all right, all right. You hear the music well? I was riding real high, feeling real good. Can you hear it? No. You're good. Okay, let me back it up. When you hit the share off to the side, it says share sound. See if that makes a difference. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. That's right. Yes, right. Hold on. That's right. Let me go. Boom. Thank you. Advanced options. That's the one. Let me stop sharing. Do it, do it the right way. I know what to do with this. Start from there and okay. And then go to advance. And I want to share this. And there it is. Where is it up there? It is computer audio. There we go. All right, here we go. All right. You hear the audio now? Yes. Great. I was riding real high, feeling real good. Wanted it to my last way that it would for the season, season dealing with the wind and the rain. I started picking up the pieces of my life after the storm, searching for something that I could build on, covering the truth, hidden in my heart, times like this. I was made to glorify you. Nothing that could ever, ever change. All I had left is one last breath. No matter how hard it gets, I want to find a way to give you one more. One more. No matter how hard it gets, I find a way to give you one one more, one more, I'll make sure you get it. I'm going to give you one more, one, one more, one more place. Place. I'm going to make my voice right. I'm going to give you one more place. I'm going to find a way to give you one more place. I was made. I was made to glory. There is nothing I can do to change. All I had left, just for the last breath. No matter how hard it gets, gonna find your way to you. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna give you one more, one more, one more. I'm gonna give you one more, one more. No matter how hard it gets, gonna find a way. I'm gonna find a way to give you one more, one more, one more. I'll make sure you get it. One more time, one more one more shout. I'm gonna tell the world and make it loud. One more time, one more shout. And no matter how hard it gets. 
find a way to turn you on. More, 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 more. Gotta get to the one more, one more, one more, All right. Sometimes I'm rolling down the highway, going into church, and I want to give God one more praise. Because no matter what I think I'm going through, and so I used to go to church and I'll come in loud. I come in with my 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 my, my car bl just blazed. I got I got the nice audio system in the escalator. I come in rocking church parking lot. And then I go on inside. Hi, happy Sabbath, Saints. <laughs> It's all nice, calm, pastor. I didn't realize it. I, mean, I said, I have been giving you guys what's really in my spirit. I went to a church that really fit me at one time. This church had me do blessed at a communion. They said, Pastor, would you do that, 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 that round and around song? I said, round and around. So yeah, you know, and around, and around, telling your way, you know. And I'm like, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but that's who I am. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Marissa. I heard that. Praise God. I'm just excited to be with you today, and I give God the praise for the privilege of sharing the word of God. I want to open the text of scripture here out of the book of Acts. As I think about Zoom family worship, and I think about really all that I've had to deal with lately, I, I, I didn't realize that I was a little depressed. Uh, I've had some losses. All of us have had some major losses. And the losses seem to keep getting closer, you know. Um, I, I almost marched in absentia <laughs> because everybody was sick. My sister was sick. My nephew was sick. My mama was sick. She was in the hospital. I got sick for a minute. I shook it off. And I wasn't going to go march until my mama was out the hospital. I was going to march in absentia. My wife, Judy, was sick. She had to crawl out of the bed. <laughs> so I had to be there a day early. My kids were trying to fly in. The airlines made sure they couldn't get there by changing their flights so they missed the graduation. And at the last minute, Judy was able to pull us. She said, I'm going to go. I don't care what happens. And so at long last, it was just the two of us in Berrien Springs. And I said, well, baby, this is how it all began. I said, do you want to have a date after the graduation, go to that little, that little lame Chinese restaurant downtown Berrien Springs? She said, no, nah, the food is probably just as nasty now as it was then. And so she said, <laughs> She said, let's go to Bonefish Grill down in South Bend instead, okay? <laughs> and me and a couple of wonderful relatives, Reggie and uh, uh, Bernice Shorey came from Chicago, and they joined us, and we just celebrated the goodness of God together. But I am grateful that that journey is over with. It, it causes me to want to do more research. Uh, I did a research on the processes that lead toward the leadership emergence of new believing Seventh-day Adventists in the Adventist Church in North America. And uh, we've got a problem. We've got a major problem where we're not we're, we're losing 70% worldwide of everything we baptize. North America, we're doing better. We're losing 60% of everything we're baptized. And that door is just swinging off the hinge. I've got some solutions that I think will work, things that I've done that I have worked. And uh, hopefully some of the brethren will listen to it. And uh, everywhere I go, if you need me to come and do a, a, a workshop for you, I'd be glad to. On discipleship and on dis making discipling leaders. That's what the dissertation was about. My next research will be on young adults because we're missing them. We got to have somebody to pass the ball to. And I'm a little too old to be the starting lineup anymore. <laughs> so at any rate, but as long as they give me the, I told my pastor, he's about 20 years younger than me. I said, well, doc, when you come here, I'll be your blind side tackle. And they can't get to you till they get through me. I've been through this. He just got back from a month off. We said, take a month off. Don't do what I did. Don't you leave no vacation time on the table like I did. Because the only ones going to remember that you did all that was your family. 
So he took the advice. He came back hot to us. All right, let's go preach it. Let's go get it. And so anyway, but I praise God. But 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 I think about Zoom family worship now. I think about something different. I think about God has done something so wonderful to a point that no matter how busy I am, I make it my point to log into here. I've had days I've had to miss it. I've had other days where I'm spot on. I'm right here at four o'clock. Bam. You know, so I've had all of that. But but I say something different. So God gave me something out of the book of Acts, chapter uh, 15. Book of Acts, chapter 15. And uh, I love what the Bible says in this regard. Beautiful, just a beautiful text here where the writer is making a very good statement here. And I think that it's something we can learn from Acts chapter 15, verses 16 and 17. In fact, I'm going to start with verse 15. And with this, the words of the prophet agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. Amen, amen. I wanna put a little tag on this message and call it uh, God's favorite house. I wanna call it God's favorite house. You know, all of us, in particular, all these PKs on the line, uh, have a moving experience. <laughs> I've lived in a bunch of houses throughout my life. I'm sure many of you can say the same thing. I mean, I've never lived anywhere alone since I can remember. I mean, even as a, before I was a pastor, I was a little child, born in Montgomery, Alabama. We moved around from Montgomery to Monroeville, Alabama, to Dublin, Georgia, to Tallahassee, Florida, back to Montgomery. And then we moved to Oakland, California, and remained in the Bay Area between Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo. <laughs> I met and married beautiful Judith Marjorie Bennett, and I moved to Michigan for a year. Moved her to D.C. to go back to school at Howard to get her master's uh, uh, as a nurse practitioner. Then we moved to Maryland, started our family there. And then I received my first pastorate coming back to San Diego, uh, going to 31st Street and from there to Riverside to Mount Rubido. And then from there back to 31st Street and then from there up to Seattle, Washington. And then from down here to Chattanooga. I mean, that's a dizzying journey, isn't it? It's a dizzying pace. And, and I never forget, one time we went back uh, 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 to look at some of the old houses back back in where we lived at in Ch uh, down in San Diego, and the kids they were so small when we went to Seattle. I had one that was four, six, and nine, and they didn't remember most of the people's names, much less the places. And they were like, "Dad, where's the beach?" Okay, <laughs> they were not into all of that, right? But I realized something though. What I realized is that for all of us, and I think this is a very important pace that 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 that, and it was it was important to me and Judy to go to the old those old houses, but it was just as, it wasn't an important to the kids. And until recently, I did not really understand the significance of that revelation. And that is this, our memories are where our heart is also. And, and it may not be to the point where we are every waking hour, but most likely we live there in the back of our minds oftentimes. It happens at every church, happens here on Zoom Family Worship, this is church where we, I can see the gleam in your eyes sometimes. This reminds you of some of the high places that God is taking you. So in our text today, uh, we've read the words of James as recorded by Luke in the book of Acts. And, and, and I believe the very heart of God is worship. And that's why I sang that song. I'm gonna give you one more praise. No matter how depressed I've felt, I've lost loved ones. I, I come out still praising. The devil don't know what to do with that. Uh, uh, on Monday, I came back. Uh, uh, from graduation, I got my mom and picked her up. I went to go move some stuff out of one storage into another one so I could close that storage out. And I opened the door. And when I opened the door, the first image I saw was some of Vicky, was some of uh, 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 Vicky Joyner's stuff. And I just felt some kind of, I had to sit out. I felt some kind of way right then because it broke my heart all over again, knowing that I'm on the way to San Diego this week to finalize my spiritual mom, Nana, uh, Nana Nola Bryant, and then I'm going to Seattle on the weekend to finalize a dear sister to me uh, in ministry. Her, her husband's like a brother to me. And uh, uh, and she passed last Wednesday. And so I'm going to go to Seattle and finalize her. And so the only thing that gets me out of this rut is praise, is giving glory to God. And so as I'm looking at this record by James, 
uh, uh, recorded by Luke, but but James was interviewed in this scenario. And, and we read this. I believe that the very heart of God is worship. And when you look at the context of his statement, the half brother of Jesus, that's James, he is the head now of the Jerusalem church. And he is not talking about worship. He's talking about something else. But, but James is at the Jerusalem council and he's there to help deal with the Gentile question. And one of the issues is whether the Gentiles had to be circumcised in order to be saved. So he actually quotes from Amos chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, to prove that Gentile salvation without circumcision was already an Old Testament doctrine. It was just time to apply it to New Testament times. And, and so he quoted Amos 9, verses 11 through 12. And that day I'll rebuild uh, uh, David's tabernacle to prove his point. But you know, as, I, as he quotes Amos, to prove Gentile salvation apart from circumcision, he's also, check this out, he's telling us something about the character of God. He reveals what God's favorite place of worship is like. So after God tells us in Amos 9 that he'll punish the wicked, and he says that in that day I'll raise up David's tabernacle, it's this statement that caused me to wonder, well, what's so great about David's tabernacle? I mean, why would God want to rebuild David's? And let's be clear, the Greek word for tabernacle in Acts and the Hebrew word in Amos both meant tent. You know, so you know, I spent all this energy telling people how God wants the best and how God's supposed to have the best. And when God himself doesn't choose what seems like the best, at least judging by human standards, I mean, why didn't God choose Moses' tabernacle? Hmm? Not only is that tabernacle the original one that came from God's pattern established in heaven, but it is full of historic beauty. It's the sanctuary, and we can uh, go interwoven within all the furniture. It's made of gold. Uh, why did he choose that one? How about, how about Solomon's temple? Why did he choose Solomon's temple? Uh, that was awesome and large and filled with majesty and, and everything that was made of the finest everything, right? And this was the one, by the way, that David wasn't allowed to build. David had collected so much gold and silver, bronze and precious jewels. And one day he announced to the people to stop giving. We've got enough. Oh my goodness. I'd love to be able to say that one day. Y'all stop giving. We've got enough. But this is the tabernacle that God would let, wouldn't let David build because David had too much blood on his hands from his days in battle. So God told David, I'm going to let your son Solomon build my temple. And so God comes along and says, in that day, I'll punish the wicked. I'll raise up not Moses' tabernacle, not Solomon's tabernacle, but David's. And now, I'm a digger. And as I thought about this thought of raising up David's tabernacle, it was very interesting to me because it caused me to think, you know, do y'all know who David really is? I mean, y'all do know who he is, right? Yes, he's the sweet psalmist of Israel. He's the defeater of Goliath of Gath. We're talking about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? That's the guy, right? But you know, David's a very interesting person, particularly when we consider God's choice. What is it about David that had God preferring him over King Saul? God made a covenant with David, but what is it about him that allows God to make that covenant of his, uh, of his hand always being upon David and his family, but not the same thing for Saul? Huh? When David first assumes the kingdom, watch this now, check this out. We're just talking about who David is, right? So we can understand the choices that God is making, right? It was uh, 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 Ishbosheth, Saul's son, who reigned in the northern kingdom while David reigned in the southern kingdom for the first five years stretch, right? There's been kind of a civil war going on and, and there's been continual fighting. If you read the stories of David and, and the kings and, and Samuel, uh, there's continual fighting against Saul's blood. We don't highlight that much, but it's there, right? And that is because the legacy and lineage of Saul is the only threat to David's reign. So David shares blood wherever he feels he needs to. And even though he has a covenant with God, David does not trust any descendants of Saul except one, and that's Mephibosheth, and that's because he's disabled. But David is interested in worshiping God, yes, but he is also interested just as much in solidifying and embracing his kingdom. And then here's some issues of David and his family, particularly, how about his sons? You've got two sons trying to kill him and take over the kingdom. huh? David and Absalom, that was his abject failure. I mean, oh my goodness. And how about David and Adonijah? 
However great David was as a king and a leader, he was just as bad as a father. And as it was, is with any family with this kind of power, there is often a power struggle with the inheritance of that power. I'm just asking the question, do y'all know who David is? <laughs> and then we have David and Michal, his wife, the daughter of Saul. David never really loved Michal, but he kept her in his kingdom because that solidifies the partnership and the agreement he had with Saul. Remember now, one of the customs of that day was in order to avoid war, they would intermarry with someone from the other side, like the daughter of the opposing king, right? And even with the, uh, uh, the fact that David doesn't love her, he still sins for her. And I'll never forget reading about that whole scene, that sad story where Michal is packing up her things. She doesn't want to go. She loves the man that she's with. And she's going and riding the chair that David sent with her husband who loves her, following behind the chariot in, in tears, watching that chariot take her away from David. Mm. So imagine the kind of king that David is who can claim another man's wife, even though he knows that he does not love her and her husband does, but David needs her for political reasons. Oh, David's a different kind of man, man. Oh, my goodness. And we already know about that. I ain't had have to go into the Bathsheba deal, right? You had this cat, Uriah, who was actually more committed than David was, huh? And his, 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 his committal got him killed. He, he wouldn't even sleep with his wife. And David knocks him off, right? So I asked the, the question with all of this, right? All this going. In fact, when you go down and keep reading the story of David, even his last, the last words of a person on a deathbed, you know, David was really bad. The Bible says they brought him and a lady, a young lady, this, and, and, and she said just to keep him warm, right? <laughs> now, y'all know what that meant, right? Y'all know what that meant. And so, and the Bible says, and so David did not know her, right? They said, he's done. If he didn't sleep with her, he's done. He's wrapped up, right? This dude is done. So he calls Solomon in to give him some last words. And he opens up with, you know, the Lord, you got to follow the Lord God. God promised that if you stayed with him, if any of your sons stick with him and, and, and follow him, that I'll bless him all the days of his life. And then he whispers, he said, by the way, I didn't forget what, what, what Joab did. Don't let his gray hairs go down in peace. Mm. So like the Godfather, David is giving hits out to Solomon on who to knock off. He does it to two people. He said, don't let his gray hairs go to the grave in peace, right? And then David dies. So as I asked the question, wait a minute. So God, why? So let's get back to it now. God, why would you want to rebuild David's tabernacle? What's so special about David's tabernacle? Friends, as I mentioned earlier, that oftentimes your favorite place is, is wrapped in memories. The reality is that God remembered how David was before he let power all right, before he let power change. And so God made a commitment. He was still the Lord's shepherd. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He was a man after God's own heart. He had some problems, but guess what? We don't always understand how God makes choices these days. We think we know. We think it's by certain kinds of works. And you'd say, wait a minute, David did. Actually, David less, did less stuff than Saul did when you wrap it all up. David was guilty of more crazy stuff than Saul was. But here God is saying, I'm going to rebuild David's tabernacle, right? So the first thing I'm going to share with you this afternoon is that God saw that David once worshipped him with passion, even without having a palace. Here on Zoom Family Worship, we worship God with passion, and we don't have a palace. Huh? But we're still giving God the praise, amen? You know, we live in an age right now where Folk have this idea that my church is this awesome, gorgeous uh, facility that's put together and, and we put the very best we can and we have our church has got to be the best looking or have the best or the prettiest windows and the prettiest seats. But family, I want you to know this afternoon that God does not come down to a place because of how much it's worth or how nice it even looks. God comes down based on the worship in the building, not the building of the worship. 
And I've seen places today that were awesomely beautiful, but the place of worship inside was as dry as the hills of Gilboa. And then I've seen people worshiping God from the bottoms of their hearts in gymnasiums and, and little old buildings uh, that look like lean-to shacks. And, and the place was shaken by the presence of the Holy Ghost, huh? Now, Solomon's house was awesome. Oh, my goodness. There we find that God's house uh, that, that Solomon built was absolutely the most fantastic wonder of that time. Even in our day, it would be considered an architectural phenomenon. Not to mention it would be very priceless, right? Moses' house was awesome, right? This is another temple was built for the Lord. It was built to be a mobile temple. Not as nice, but grand compared to the one that David built. And we've got to realize here that although Moses' temple was a tent, it was more than a tent. It was an awesome display of beauty and craftsmanship. And by all means, nothing could be compared to Solomon's magnificent temple. But yet God here in chapter 15 says, I'm going to return again in that day, to about the latter day, and rebuild the tabernacle of David. And, and we know what God's looking for. God's looking for a place where he can land where God gets the glory. Because God is not looking for a building that gets the glory. Come on, somebody. God is not looking for a man or a woman that will get awarded and get great awards for building an awesome building. God is looking for a man or a woman that will stand up against the tide, a man or a woman who will stand up against the evil that is coming to this pre present world. And so family, here's the deal. One of the things that makes me so, that makes family worship so special is that God is looking for passion and not a palace. It's not the building. It's the builder. Come on now that God is interested in, huh? And when a passion for God is in the building, or hey, or on the Zoom platform, huh? God will be the builder. Amen, somebody, huh? So where's the glory, somebody? David's passion. That's where the glory is. God had a favorite house, and that house was the one that David built. However, the most powerful component of David's tabernacle began long, long before the tent was constructed. You see, family, it began in the heart of David. In spite of all the junk that David did, David's heart was a man who chased God. That's amazing. That's amazing. It began in the fields when he watched over his sheep, huh? When David would sit with God and write songs about his love for God. When David would look to God for strength and, and thank him when it came. We're not coming, we're not talking about when he let power corrupt his thinking. We're talking about, and even when he did mess up, he still had the, the temerity to ask God for forgiveness. Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Purge me with hyssop. Lord, look at me. Oh, I'm a mess. My souls run in the night. Lord, where am I going to find help? You are my helper. Now, my friends, you remember the story when the ark came home and David went to go get that ark? When David began talking about bringing the ark of the covenant back to Jerusalem, he wasn't interested in the things that were placed in the ark or the gold boxes. He was interested in the blue flame of the glory of God, that the holy Shekinah that rested between the outstretched wings of the cherubim on the top of the ark. And that represented to David that God was truly coming home to be with him in his house. And I believe this is why God said what he said, because he saw that that was the intent that David had. Even on that day, with Michal not loving David, and David not loving Michal, and David is doing this dance before the Lord with all his might. He doesn't come dressed like a king. He comes in with regular garments on. He took off all the, the priestly robes. And he came in as a regular citizen, and Michal, she criticized him because there was no love to be lost, right? That's the backdrop of why that happened, by the way. But David was worshiping with all his might because it was symbolic that God had taken over the place. When we come to Zoom worship, we have got to come in realizing that God wants to take over the worship, every aspect of it, every part of it. And that's why God wanted to build that thing in his way. And that's why God called David a man after his own heart. David was a man after God's own heart, and David knew how to worship and when to worship. And that's what God was looking for. Now, the cost of intimacy is great. You know, and this is what we miss. This is what we miss oftentimes. I know it sounds extreme, but I do want God to show up with this kind of glory. And we as a church, we have forgotten that God wants to share with us 
And that God wants to play with us. He wants to be with us. And I'm afraid today that we've gotten so caught up in the appetizers that we're not remembering that there's a main course. And that main course is God. Everything else other than God is simply a warm-up or an appetizer, right? So the question is today, do we want God? Huh? Because we need to get ready because God is on his way. It is no longer acceptable to come to a good church, by the way, to good services, good preaching, good music. Everything's got to be off the chain, right? It is no longer acceptable to come to an almost service. When we proclaim that God is showing up, when he starts to move, we feel his glory and his power for only a brief moment. Then we are satisfied and then we draw back. You know, when I think about what God is thinking about uh, and what he's looking for in worship and why he called David's tabernacle as the place I'm going to rebuild, I think about Song of Solomon, chapter five, verses two through four. When I go to Song of Solomon, check this out. Oh, my goodness. This is so beautiful. Song of Solomon, chapter five, uh, verses two uh, 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 and uh, through four. He says, I've come to my garden, verse one. My sister, my spouse I have gathered my myrrh, my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, oh friends. Drink, yes, drink deeply, oh loved ones. Here it is. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It's the voice of my beloved. He's knocking, saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. We have I Watch this now, but look how she responds. Look. I've taken off my robe. How can I put it back on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? My beloved has put his hand by the latch of the door. My heart yearned for him. I rose to open for my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, but on the handles of the lock. Oh my goodness. You know what's going on here, family? That's an awesome scene right there. That's painted by Solomon. You know what's going on here? <laughs> Jesus is knocking on the door of our church, knocking on the Zoom family worship doors, trying to get in, and we standing on the inside saying, look, I've already laid down for the night. <laughs> I've already washed my feet. Do you want me to get up again and get myself dirty? And the latch, watch this now, guys. The Bible declares that Jesus, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. The latch is on our side, right? And the door is locked from the inside. And so God is looking for somebody, a church and a city that will open up to him, that will not try to count the cost of intimacy with him. When I'm intimate with my wife, I don't care what time of night it is. It's a great time to be all hugged up. Somebody ought to shout amen wherever you are, huh? That's what Jesus is looking for. That's why he wanted to rebuild the temple of David. Not because it was the prettiest, not because David was even perfect, but when David was living right, that's what it was all about. And that's what God is looking for out of you and I today, huh? You know, we get comfortable sometimes. We get caught up in our programs, our traditions, our status. And we refuse to open the door because it's not convenient. You know, the cost of debt, intimacy is high. And we've been burnt in the past and we stand around and saying, I'm not going to be burnt again. And the reality is this family, we have lost our vision. And to lose one's vision is to perish. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is to perish. That's right. That's right. It is interesting. When you lose your vision, Mikhail never had the vision, unfortunately. I think if David had tried to even love her, but she was a part of a political deal. I mean, you know, he brought the ark into the, uh, into the city. Mikal, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window, saw him dancing and playing. And the Bible says she despised him in her heart. She was so used to living without the king in the house. Listen to this. She was so used to living without the king in the house. When he came home from battle, she didn't even want him to be there. Mm. It could be suggested that David was never again intimate with his wife, Mikal. He never had any children by her. And one of the reasons why he didn't was because if he had a child with Mikal, that child would have to be part of the lineage of Saul. He didn't want anybody to have a chance to get access to his lineage. And the disgust she had for him locked the door to intimacy. And then she was labeled barren from that time on. But the bottom line, she, she, she didn't have any children by David. But the reality, my friends, is that when we are not pro, uh, uh, poised, rather, poised to worship and be intimate with God, 
it messes up our planned services. Because sometimes God will show up and turn this thing upside down. Sometimes God will show up and it won't be like we thought it was going to be. And we will just turn away from our, our lust and our programming and stop with all the preliminary junk. God may just say, here, I'm going to be with my children today and all day because opportunity is knocking, huh? We've got to open the door when God knocks, huh? Don't wait in a service for someone to make a move if God directs you to move in a certain way, then move. And now I know that some of us are very happy and content just to smell the fragrance where he used to be or to live off the blessings of yesterday's revival. But I'm telling you this afternoon that what I am sick and tired of reading about is a revival of yesterday. Yeah, they were good. But I want to meet the revivaler, huh? I don't want a secondhand experience. I want a firsthand encounter. And to equate that in the physical, imagine a wife or a husband that grieves the spouse that has just passed. And they grab the pillows and they smell the fragrance of the departed. Even in the natural, we must at one point or another stop the grieving process and go on with our lives. Even as much as in the spiritual friends. You know, we speak, we speak so much about the past. Yeah, that was a good was a good service. Yeah, that was a good preacher. Yeah, there were some nice songs, right? But the key here is that that's where the was is referred to the past. We've got to quit living on a touch from yesterday. God wants to fill us up today. And we've got to get up off of our beds. No matter how weary, no matter how if we've washed and showered, no matter what, if we've laid down and gone to sleep, Girl, you better pull that flannel, whatever, off. Pull them curlers out the hair. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you better get ready because the King of Kings is coming to have worship and to be with you. And we've got to rise up and get closer to God than ever before, before he leaves us. And all that remains is a fragrance of where God was. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, y'all, but I refuse to cuddle up to a hollow memory of what used to be. Huh? What it was like, it's not indicative of what it can be, huh? We must pray, Lord, see, I seek your face. And the last thing I want to give you is this. You know, if we build it, he will come. I thank God that you all built this platform. You built it and he has come. Yeah. I wish in other churches, over here at Mount Pisgah, we tried to build it. And there are days he shows up. They shout more than they thought. They, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, I caught myself shouting. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> But family, we can grasp this. It is what God wants to visit us, but we have not built anything which will hold his weight. I, be, I became a big guy, and I'm very particular about where I sit. I don't like to sit low because I got to climb up. All right, here we go. One, two. There was a time I'd wake up in the mornings. I was just up. I was just up. You know, back in the day, I could dunk back in the day. I never forget. I thank Ken Scott. I love Ken. He came and did an active shooter thing at our church. And he told us, he said, by the way, your pastor was a baller. And uh, he was even my coach. I said, thank you, kid. Thank you. I love you. Because they look at me, big fat me. They said, he ain't never played nothing, right? <laughs> I was just glad. I was just glad that he, as I wobble, <laughs> my wife said, how do you walk? When you walk, you walk like this, right? I said, but buddy, I'm still walking, right? <laughs> but I was glad that he affirmed me on that day. <laughs> And, and then we ran across some pictures when I played city city softball in, in DC, and she used to she used to wear my jersey, so she knew. At third place, at third base, that was a land of no hit. Me and my boy Bronson Brown, he was at shortstop, I was at third. That was a land of you ain't getting a hit on this side back in the day, amen, right? But at any rate, my family, I'm just saying, I don't want to live with just images of what used to be. I want to write now reality, huh? And, and I'm very particular about where I sit. I don't sit on weak chairs, so I'm not trying to go down, right? I'm saying this. We have not built him a mercy seat. Or do we want him to even visit? Oh, my goodness. Are we satisfied with the status quo this morning? Huh? And so my family, God wants us to give him the praise and the glory. Even Hezekiah, even the revivals that Hezekiah did, it was to rebuild a revival in our spirit that the whole thing starts and ends right there. True worship, my family. Here it is. Hear me this morning. 
this afternoon. True worship is a transforming experience. If we move into true worship, the kind that will build a mercy seat right here on the Zoom platform or wherever it is you worship normally, then God's glory or God's kabod, that's the Hebrew for term for glory, will show up and then we can have revival. Come on, somebody. Not until then, and we cannot have revival based on temporal things, uh, change in the worship style. That ain't done in it, no. New carpet, no, no, it's nice on the feet. No, no, no. New paint, no. We base our revival on God. And the real tragedy this this, this afternoon, my family, is that is that any church can be a revival all the time. All the time. The opportunity for true worship at any service is there. We just need to enter the worship in the right way. So when we come, come prepared to worship. Hezekiah understood Judah had lost his passion for worship. The temple had been closed by his father Ahaz. And the people hadn't worshipped for some time. Simply getting people to church wouldn't work. You know, when the pandemic, you know, the pandemic haven't ended. Y'all know that, right? Yeah, the COVID has gotten raged up a little. He said, yeah, y'all thought I was gone? I still got teeth left, right? <laughs> we found out that simply getting people back to church wasn't working. Yeah, it's not just like that. And so now we need to prepare adequately and set an example. And so it begins with a commitment to God, right? David, here it is, guys. This is why God wanted to rebuild the tabernacle for David. David has such a passion that he instituted 24-7 worship services. Can you imagine that? 24-7, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got praise teams that rotate, and they, and they work for them all day long. So if you tired, wait until AY, oh my, you would have enjoyed David's time because they were worshiping all day, right? They were right there, right? And David had such a passion. That's why he, uh, he had worshipers at his tabernacle 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for about 36 years. He developed an entire worship team and a staff in the kingdom. And you could go to the temple and worship anytime, day or night. And, and, and we talk about how tired we are. <laughs> we got folk came and come to prayer meeting at our church. They're talking about, so Pastor Hopti, when are we going to start having live prayer meeting? I said, when y'all show up to the, to the Zoom prayer meeting. <laughs> I'm not driving out from Chattanooga for, for eight people. When I only got 12 online <laughs> and of the 12, three are driving as he could. No, I'm not doing all that. I asked Pastor Sapolo. He said, no, nah, man, this, you call it. It's your call. I said, right, yeah, we, but I, I'm going to institute. I'm going I'm to try it. I'm going to call something. I'm going to call it Wednesday Night Live. I'm going to call it Wednesday. We're going to jump it off coming off in September. We're going to do Wednesday Night Live at least twice a quarter. See how they, if they show up. Hey, but if they don't, we're going to be back Zooming again. <laughs> But the point is that it's not just a matter of just getting them back in the building. That ain't working just like that, right? And, and if we would just, what would happen, friends, if we had that kind of worship 24-7, seven days a week. Then when you came on Sabbath, it was the apex. See, that's what God, that's what he's trying to rebuild. That's what David did, huh? That, that was before Michal, huh? That was before Bathsheba, huh? That was before him and Adonijah and 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 and, and uh, uh, Absalom, huh? When David was a point on, oh my goodness, it was like that, right? And, 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 but there, very, with very few exceptions, my friends, the church sanctuary is the most unused building in America. Yes, indeed, we have our doors open about eight hours a week at the max. Yeah, yeah, about it. That's about it. But David, here it is, family. Found a way to usher in God's glory. Yeah, yeah. All these, by the way, all of his musicians had to render an excellent worship. They were all on the payroll. I'm going to say that again. For those of us, I remember back in the day when we didn't pay our musicians. Yeah, that was wrong. David had everybody on the payroll. What they did, they did for the kingdom. They were part of the priesthood. That's right. And God is not looking for good enough. Good enough is never good enough. God is looking for excellence in worship. And no church can expect this membership to have a passion for worship if the leadership doesn't. So it starts with us. It starts with you. It starts with me, right? And worship is not just some routine that we go through today, but we got to not only prepare, we've got to cleanse. God, please clean me up. David was so dirty. You know 
Come on, guys. What, what I just read to you, we don't often talk about the stuff that I talked about with David early. We will talk about Bathsheba, and that's about where we leave it off at, right? But all that stuff that he did, we don't talk about that stuff. But 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 David knew my my I'm dirty. Purge me with hyssop, wash me, and I'll be white as snow. I'm the one. One time he was talking about his sin over in Psalm 5. He said, I'm like a bird alone in the housetop. He said, ashes are mingled with my drink. He says, watch this, and I water my couch. He said, all the night long, make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. So he messed up, but he didn't feel good about it. And God says, I need somebody who can feel good about worshiping me and not feel good about sin. Amen. So I need you to be cleaned up and be willing to let God clean you up. And then number two, and you got to get rid of the clutter. huh? I'm taking a book out of Hezekiah's plan over in 1 Kings chapter 29. Got to remove all the clutter. We got things that hold us back, that weigh us down, that keep us from worshiping the way God wants us to worship. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. But I, once, once the commitment is understood that we've got to make and accept that our first job is to give it all the clutter. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been so blessed by this, this, this vehicle. I make sure the clutter is out of my get on Zoom family worship. I sure do. Because I've seen, I've seen it remind me. And I think it reminds God of the tabernacle of David. Yes, sir. And when we come to true worship God, we have to leave the clutter and the junk out somewhere. The distractions only keep us from the presence of God, huh? And when we come, come ready to celebrate, huh? Come to give praise to God. Don't focus on the crowds. Don't worry about who's there, who's not there. It's got to be on God anyway. It's not about what we get when we worship, by the way. It's about what we give, huh? That's right. You know, in church, we have offering plates that go by. And I know our church is a very poor church. And so we have a different offering system here. But but the celebration includes songs and praise. And, and it's not that we don't take money out the plate. We put something in. Amen, somebody, huh? And then last but not least, hmm. the reason why he wants to rebuild the tabernacle of David is because our heart is the real place. That's the temple. Yeah. True worship is not just something that happens. Something we prepare for and then participate in. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Know you not that you're the temple of God? and the spirit of God desires to dwell in you, that's the temple. Is God longing to be in our presence? Is he standing at the back door waiting to come in with his hat and coat still on? Does he leave sad because our worship is so that it will never create a place for him to sit? The seats are not comfortable enough. But if we build it, he will come. And so I encourage you today, my family, Whenever we come together, let's make sure we build a place that Jehovah wants to come. And when he knocks on the door, open the door to let him in. And I guarantee you, he will rebuild the temple of David in your heart and my heart. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. When I see David, I said, Lord, this dude was scandalous. But you still want to build a temple that he built. My goodness which tells me that you are not evaluating about the things I did. And even though that has some weight, it was always about my heart. And Lord, it's about our heart. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we submit our hearts and our spirits and our worship to you, Lord, that you might rebuild your temple in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for coming to fill our lives. We've left a mercy seat right on top for you to sit on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Doc, you know, I've got one, but this is my question, and you ended with it, that our hearts got to be in the right place. What do I need to do on a daily basis so that my heart is in that spot of true worship, uncluttered worship? What do I need to be doing? I've come to conclude that I have to decide that wherever I am, God is with me. 
And because I understand it that way, it will guide what I say, what I do. There have been days when I acted like he wasn't around. <laughs> He's like, you don't see me here? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> and then we get crazy. He step out the chest. <laughs> the body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's like, hold up, hold up now. <laughs> but, but I think taking the spirit and attitude that, Lord, I just need you with me. I, I've come to the conclusion, I just need God with me. I, I, I want to be with him. And I know that as long as I got him with me, all of the trappings, I'm gonna get those. I'm gonna, you know, in, in a person, you know, you take you take a, a, a lady or a guy that marries a millionaire, right? But guess what? They don't have to be asking for stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. They got it. So I, I want, I ask God, Lord, have, let me have the attitude to always want to be with you. You ever had anybody in your life that you love them and enjoy them so much you don't ever want to, don't want to ever not be around them? Mm -hmm. That's the attitude I want to have with Jesus. I remember my, my childhood boys. I got a couple of child. I got a lot of really good buddies. Oh my goodness, a couple of childhood boys, Percy and James Culpepper. And we we had fun. We did stupid stuff, like like build a build a raft and try to float on the San Francisco Bay with some old wood, you know, like that, like that. And then when we got out past Golden Gate Fields and it started coming apart. <laughs> I never told my mother until I was grown. <laughs> Oh. Man, I love being around those guys yeah. every day, every day. Like my wife, I love being around her. Yeah, until she's in that cleaning mood, and it's like, you know, honey, I think I got to be somewhere. I know, I got to. Now you get on because you be tired. You're done. <laughs> that that honey do list be growing. You be like, I, Ooh, I, I need Lord that. Was, all right, all right. Uh, but, just... but there's a desire to want to be with him all the time. Praise God. If I can enjoy his presence all the time, I'm going to be okay. Got it. Got it. Can, you, can you stick around and do prayer for us? Be honored to do so, yes, sir. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Uh, guys, uh, uh, um, God has blessed us with a word from Doc today. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is use the chat to put your prayer request in. We are going to share a song for that. And uh, while it's playing, if you put your uh, prayer request that would into uh, into the chat, uh, we definitely want to take those to the throne of grace because God answers prayers and we know that. So please do that.
We're asking for Eric Kelly is asking for us to please pray for our schools, especially Oakwood and Pine Forge. Debbie Millett is reminding us that we have grieving Mims and Kibble families who will be memorializing their loved ones tomorrow. She's also asking for healing for her friend Doris, who is recovering from a stroke and she has an unspoken. Janice Willis is asking us to pray for Sheila Mercer Veal and her family. She lost her sister Margaret Thursday night to cancer. Elacia asking for family and unspoken. Dorothy Jones broke her back and she mm. also has heart issues. Dorothy, we're praying for you. Unspoken from Vincent Street. Lou and Velma also asking that we pray for all the students, the teachers, and professors as they enter this school year. And a reminder to you all that on September 14th, we will be having our second annual education day where we will indeed be engaging in that corporate prayer together. A praise report from Stephanie Smith. Maurice's kidney surgery went well. He still has weeks of recovery ahead. So please continue to pray for him. And another request for prayer for the teachers and the students as they return to school. Kansas Avenue Church, we're asking for prayer for those members as they grieve their losses while supporting the families of Winston Richards and Margaret Mercer. Gloria just found out today that a really good friend of hers is sick. She feels the pain for him and his family and she bequeaths them all to the father. Our speaker Cleveland Hobbity is asking for prayer for the grieving Bryant family in San Diego and the grieving Bennett family of Greenville, Mississippi. Carla is asking for continued healing. Carla, we see that you have open heart surgery scheduled for Tuesday and the prayer team will be lifting you up in prayer on that day for sure. Yes. Juan is asking that, is thanking God for the good word and asking that we please remember Gerald Grando and his family as brother Elder Grando passed away two weeks ago and his services this coming week at Valley Fellowship here in Rialto, California. Jackie Blake is not only thanking God for her grandson Elijah on his 10th birthday, but asking that we pray for all of our grandchildren, for all of those here on this <clears throat> call. Jesse Ann Henry, we're asking for physical, uh, for prayer for her, for physical healing. Richard Long for family. Kenny Anderson is prayers for the family of Reverend Dr. Greg Smith, a champion for empowering the black community, especially as youth and incarcerated. Sharon is asking for safe travel for her husband and son and prayers again for students leaving home, some of them who are leaving for the first time. Eric, you want to take it from here? Okay, Janera is saying, uh, asking for a prayer for me and the Daniels family. My parents, Wilbur and Kathy Daniels, also for my friends BP and CT. Also, please pray for my brother Roy and my sister-in-law, Sheila. Dr. Hobby, lifting up Pastor Donovan Washington of Kansas Avenue. Carla Wright, blessed by the message, pray that I'll honor God continually, never taking him for granted. Pray that I'll be clear about how he wants to enlarge my territory for his greater glory and my greater fulfillment for the benefit of the greatest number of people he can bless through me. Amen. Amen. Marissa, thank you for your prayers over the Pathfinder Clubs back from Gillette. Praise God. Please continue to pray for Adela's dad and his health. DM Gardner, thankful for God's faithfulness and love as a believer, the promise Pathfinder Camp Rhea's volunteer and parent of Beltsville Broncos, director and Pathfinders. Fernanda, pray for my family and me. Keep my niece and her family in prayer as they will be in Austria for the next three years. Her daughter is seven. Please pray for her as she makes this transition. Sheila pray, Frazier, please pray for Beverly Thomas, who's in the hospital. Elastia, pray for Doris and Norman Miles. Sheila Frazier, unspoken. Cynthia Monsanto, I thank God for his mercies and letting me see another year. Praise God. Please pray for Ann McCurdy, Lillian Whitaker, Myrna Johnson, our children, and my family. Andrea Wright, praise reports. God blessed my 20-year-old son, Eddie, with a job. Just walking from a distance, a little walking from my distance, from my little uh, villa. Huge blessing because we are uh, uh, still sans safe, reliable, affordable transportation. Please keep praying for that. And he registered the 2024 fall semester for fall class load 
online at the local college, and my COVID symptoms are virtually gone. Praise God, uh, Andrea. Feeling so much better. Praise the Lord. Yes. Sheila Glenn Cole, unspoken. Carrie Williams, healing for Wanda Jenkins. Robin Wilson, family and friends in Bermuda, continued safety from Hurricane Ernesto. And uh, any more prayer requests coming in, uh, God answers prayers, even if we're not reading what's on that line there. Uh, the prayers are still circling the throne of grace. So uh, we know and expect God to, to answer those prayers. Dr. Hobdy, can you take those to the throne of grace for us? Yes, sir, with honor. Father, thank you. Thank you for all these prayer requests that have come forward. By faith, Lord, you receive them like incense on the altar of incense. Lord, in them is filled with praise, but also petition, Lord. The folk that are going through that are hurting right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask and need you to provide a great blessing. For some, Lord, there's comfort like never before, like more than any human being could ever even think about rendering. Lord, for others, Lord, it is special healing. And so we ask in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for bringing back Pathfinders safely, Lord. We're praying that everybody's out of Gillette now, Lord, and back in their places of abode. We ask, Lord, you'll bless our schools. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that they've gotten started now and that everything will get settled, Lord, and that they'll be strong, and that they'll bless our young folk, Lord, and our kids, and that Lord, they'll grow into your likeness throughout the year. Uh, we ask that same blessing, Lord, even in the public school setting, as we have so many of our Christian family that is located in those schools as well. And particularly, Lord, hold up schools like Pine Forge, Oakwood University, Lord, and our, our local church schools, Lord, that need lots of love, Lord, need lots of patience and lots of work, Lord, and to bless these kids that they may grow into your likeness. We also, Father, in the name of Jesus, ask that you'll bless our family and friends of Bermuda, Lord, that they'll be safe from this Hurricane Ernesto that's headed that way, and that, Lord, you'll, you'll just, just anchor down, Lord, and just be a barricade, Lord, be a fence around them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let that hurricane go north or south or away from a direct hit, Lord. Bless Wanda, Lord, Wanda Jenkins, in a very special way, Father. And, and Lord, for all those unspoken requests in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you'll look into our hearts and see, see the thing that is unspoken, Lord, and then heal according to your goodness and your grace and your mercy. And then, Father, we want to just thank you uh, uh, for just blessing our families that who've been hospitalized, Lord. Bless Beverly Thomas, Lord, she's in the hospital now. We're praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will heal her and lift her out of that place. And then, Lord, we're just praying that you'll keep our families, Lord, uh, together. Some will be some of them out of the country and will be there for a few years, Lord. And we're praying that you'll bring them back safely. Uh, uh, all of these aspects, Lord, that we need you to step in and to bless. And then, Lord, as we lift our hearts and our heart and our minds to you, Lord, we just take our whole being. And Lord, take me as I am. I'm, I'm not much, but if you'll have me, Lord, if you would have any of us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we'd be very honored that you would receive us. Bless this platform, Lord. Bless our leaders, Lord, my, my big brother, Eric, Lord, and the team. We're praying, Father, that you'll just bless us more abundantly as we look forward to days, Lord. We know that these days are going to get tough. And there are days when we're going to cry. But Lord, we pray that you will be that very present help even in this time of trouble. We thank you. We praise your name for all these blessings and all the prayer requests. Please answer, Lord, by your grace. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thank you, Doc. Um, you, you have blessed us today. Um, I got to turn you over to uh, what I did know is that there's a tent master guild. I thought it was just one of them, but there's a group of them. Uh, notice the other picture is gone, the one for which I'll be chastised <laughs> later. But uh, there's a tent master guild and they work together and they talk. So I don't want to disrespect any of them. Uh, I just want to say, uh, I'm turning you over to Ch Chancellor 
Ah, Chancellor Kenny. Yes, yes. Be before you do, can I can I play a song that's pretty close that recorded years ago? You can. We're gonna do that. Go ahead, man. Do it. And it's a song, it's a song of prayer that I think that that will encourage people, particularly those who are going through right now. Absolutely. That's spot on, Doc. That's yeah. spot on. Eric, right. uh, Eric, before we go to the tip master, when you talk about uh, uh, how it's going to end and how we will be casting our crowns at the Savior's feet, and uh, we we were blessed at the Germantown Church. I, I, I saw Pastor Palmer on here. I don't think he's back. I, don't, I think he's gone, but... We we were blessed at Germantown Church in Philadelphia to uh, have a uh, Hollywood playwright and a New York um, on stage. Anyway, she was in the entertainment uh, business and she was an actress before joining the church and she brought her talents and we did three productions. Mm -hmm. I mean, productions at Germantown. One, uh, one of those productions, the last scene was we we had our our costumes and everything was our white robes and we had crowns and we were casting them at Jesus's feet. I at 
the dress rehearsal, we had to stop practicing and go, mm. because everybody was in tears. Mm. We were crying and we, it, it ended up for at least about 45 minutes to an hour mm. praying and crying and testifying and just, just, mm. it was so powerful that scene. And we, we did it. We did that particular play three nights, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. It was a ticketed thing, but it was free, but it was ticketed. Mm -hmm. And every, each and every time we did that scene, tears. The, the, the audience was in tears. Absolutely. We were in tears. Absolutely. It was so powerful. And when you were talking about that, I was brought to tears just a few minutes ago, just thinking about how yeah. we portrayed that scene and how real it felt to us when we were uh, rehearsing it. And then we, when we were portraying it in, in our play. Yeah, yeah. Well, as Dr. Hobby was talking about staying close to God, that's really what this is all about. We'll get freaked out over what's on our browser, what CNN is saying, what's Trump doing. We live for four years waking up every day. What did Trump say long before we went to the Bible? Yeah. And so Satan was already in control of our minds during that time. But what you just said, if you wake up every day visualizing, I wake up thinking about the tree of life, mom and pop, Roddy, uh, uh, Harry Swinton. I wake up in the morning yeah. knowing they're going to be there. And y'all know how many people all of y'all have lost. Yeah. You know, you know, Winston's going to be there. I mean, this that's as real yes, as me picking up a piece of paper off this desk. Yeah. But we, we've got to have it up there just as real. So I, I appreciate you, sis. That's, yeah. that's real talk. Real talk. Yes. Real yeah. talk. Chancellor, are you on? I am here. All Hi. right. I'm sorry. My name is Evelyn Sampson. I can't be quiet. I was invited through Clementine, Elder Clementine Collins through like my past family. Okay. And Elder uh, Dr. Hobby, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to echo what the sister just said about the rendition that they did for that coming scene. Uh -huh. As a member of the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jackson, Mississippi, we did something similar, but we did it through the form of sign language and also with the um, music as well. Uh -huh. So if you know those who are not deaf, God's got a people, like you were saying at the beginning, everybody going to be there. All walks, all faiths, all everything <laughs> going to be there. So in order for them to get there, they got to hear the word too. So we Preach. give the word through the sign, through the hand language, so they can hear it, they can feel it, they can see it, and they can express that as well. If you will go to YouTube, y'all get a chance to, because the lady who did it, the Holy Spirit, and God's Holy Spirit impressed upon her that it was time for her to stop doing it. We did it for about 10, maybe 12 years. But then he impressed upon her, gave her visions, I don't know if vision of what it was, but she stopped it. She wanted to make sure that it was marked and it was recorded. So it is now on YouTube for anybody to go out there and look at it so you can get a chance. It's Jackson Berean because yeah. you got Atlanta Berean, but you put Jackson Berean and you can look and you can find that ministry out there where we were doing it in sign language. And that last scene that we did when the angel, whoo, I'm going to get excited here in a minute. <laughs> the angel when they're crying, holy, 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 going into walking Jesus back into the most yes. holy back up in the heaven. Yes. That yeah. was the part where I had I was doing that. And you're talking about tears? Thinking about it? Woo! Yes. Think about that. And then go back and read an Ellen White's recount of how it was going to be. It was awesome. And to feel that, just to be there. I got to be there. Yes. Got to be there. What's, no, what's the name there? of the program in, in Mississippi? It's, the name of the church is Jackson Berean. Okay. But what's the name of the program? What do we look for on YouTube? I don't know if it actually has a name of a call sign language or what it is, but I will get that to pass to Dr. Hobby so he can pass it on to you all. But I will find the exact name because we got a lot of them that's out there, but I will find it. It's, we recorded a couple of times, but I promise you, I'll get it for you. Thank and you. The way she had it laid out at the end, yeah. all that white and all that gold and the crown thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And, and whatever we can do in this life pales. Yes. In comparison yes. to what it's really going to be. Yes, like. absolutely. It pales. That's right. So we, we, we're going to be Kojic at least one time in our existence. <laughs> we're going to run around and go, 
Anyway, I'm sorry. Tent Master. I don't, I don't get coaches to the point where I'm running, but I do get the point. Well, I am a member of one of the coaching churches in Philly. I am a member of True Worship Church of God in Christ. You go I ahead, have full membership. You, yes, I you do. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. All right, Tent Master, how you doing? Doing great, and I'm uh, happy to serve on behalf of the original Tent Master today. Uh, Dana and I are not just Zoom family worship members, but we've literally been friends for over 60 years. And so I'm just honored to stand in his place today and uh, do what he normally does in my own special way. Uh, first of all, we want to thank our speaker once again, uh, Dr. Hoppy. On behalf of the 95 people who participated today in worship, we're grateful for you allowing God to use you. And we will cherish the words that you have shared with us today. And we honor you for giving us the gift of your time this afternoon. Thank you for being a part of that. I'm always inspired each week as the tent master shares music as well. And so I thought I would also follow in that line. A little more contemporary than the tent master usually is. So <laughs> the old, line he's today old. is uh -oh. commission, commission seven. Shut up. Uh, which I became uh, acquainted with over 30, almost 35 years ago now when that album first came out. I was already a Commission fan at that time, but I became a lifelong fan with the uh, release of Commission 7. In fact, uh, if you have my iTunes playlist, you'll see plenty of that music uh, that I often use for inspiration. So I'll share that this afternoon uh, in light of the idea that so much of what those guys have done for so many years now have touched so many lives and so many souls and uh, enriched people in ways that no one could possibly have ever imagined when they first came out. Uh, now, schedule time. And uh, we have a schedule for uh, August as well as for September. And uh, I'm going to uh, share that information at this time. And uh, Eric, is there something more that goes with that? I'm trying to. I hope I'm. I hope it's there. Yeah. Let me make I, sure. If, yeah, if it's not, I can just roll with what I got. <laughs> well, I was threatened uh, earlier by other members of the team not to mess it up <laughs> while they were gone. So oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is actually a. First, um, and if it's not, then I certainly apologize. But I think this is the first time that a future speaker is introducing himself <laughs> on the Zoom family yes. worship. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> on next Sabbath, I have the privilege of being uh, in partnership with my very dear friend, David Person, the Social Justice Roundtable Number 8. We have been absolutely privileged to be a part of this worship, both as members, but also as contributing uh, presenters from time to time as we think about many, many things that are going on in the world today. And David and I are going to come in our own special way. We ask that you pray for us as we anticipate. You just went off, uh, Kenny. The host muted me, so I don't know what happened there. How about that? Sorry about that. All right, I'm back. All right, so that's next Sabbath, and we look forward to that on the following Sabbath, which will be August 31st. We have five Sabbaths in the month of August. We'll be joined by another member of the Zoom Family Worship Team or Board of Elders, U.S. Navy Chaplain Commander Robert Peters. It's always a privilege to hear from him as well as to see him on the Zoom uh, family worship feed. And we look forward to hearing from him on August the 31st. Following Commander Peters on September the 7th. And of course, September is a big month. That's my birthday month and I celebrate all month long. So every Zoom family yeah. worship in September is going to be a celebration. Dr. Dwayne Frazier, Senior Pastor of Columbia Community Center, SDA Church in Columbia, Maryland, will come to us in his own way on September the 7th. And we look forward to hearing what God has shared through him. On September the 14th, 
Pastor Corey Johnson, senior pastor of Germantown SDA Church. It looks yes. like there's a lot of a lot of energy around that. I've seen it last year. Uh, <laughs> Philadelphia, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Um, woof, woof. <laughs> We're so happy to have Pastor Johnson join us. We look forward to that. And uh, that will take place on September the 14th. On September the 21st, uh, my campus daughter, Imelda Hatchett Mitchell, will be our featured presenter, mother, wife, HR professional extraordinaire, health and wellness coach. Uh, we see her there with her wonderful husband, Bobby. And we look forward to hearing uh, from Imelda on the 21st of September. And then on September 28th, big day that was referenced earlier by Stephanie, I believe. And of course, uh, it's something that's near and dear to the heart of all of us, education people. Uh, I spent 16 years in higher education. I always get excited about focusing on education. Jackie Davis, master social worker, educator, biblical counselor from the Allegheny East Conference, will be our guest presenter on Education Day. As you can see, we have a lot planned for you in August and September. A reminder once again, all of the previous or many of the previous sessions are on the YouTube page. And we hope that you'll take an opportunity to be inspired by them. Uh, now, there's something that the tent master usually says at the end <laughs> of his presentation. Uh, and we talked about this last week. And I promised him because he threatened me with the idea that his statement is copyright protected. And so I will not cross any lines today. I will simply say this in my own special way. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It has been my honor to serve as guest tent master today. Until next week, be blessed. <laughs> Oh, that, very well done. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I love it. I'm going to cut that out and just send that special part to, I don't know where he is, but somewhere in the world to do. Uh, thank you, sir. I know there's a tent master's guild. Y'all probably got somebody, a third tent master in training. I know something is up. We can't. Uh, my sister, Janera, sent me a note. Are you still, still there, Janera? Sister, I thought uh, Sister Janera Daniels, un unmute if you if you you if you're there if you had something. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, yes, ma'am. Okay, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was outside um uh, cleaning my yard, mm -hmm. and I came back in the house, and I had all these bags that I had to take out to the um the trash can. Mm -hmm. I opened up the door. In between the kitchen door and the outside, we have like an iron gate. Mm -hmm. And as I was taking the trash out of the house into the to the yard, I tripped and I was falling over my kitchen porch head first. Jesus, Father, Jesus, Jesus. And I said, and I didn't say anything because it happened so fast. I'm thinking, okay, so I'm going to have blood coming all out my forehead and everything. I'm thinking this. But I didn't say anything. And so as I was falling, I felt a, a hand grab my ankle and just hold it to the floor. And when I stood up, I turned around to see if my foot had gotten caught on something and there was nothing there. So when I steadied myself and stood up, I said, thank you, Lord. I said, because I was coming off that porch head first. My guardian angel physically grabbed my ankle and anchored me to that porch and kept me from falling. I said, now my guardian angel, when I get to see him or her, or whoever, they're getting hazard pay for me because <laughs> I have had accidents. I have had near death experiences. I have had so much going on in my life. They're getting Preach. hazard pay. They are. Preach. They already know. They already know your sister is having some issues. So we're going to have to spend a little bit more extra time yep. keeping her where she needs to be. But I just wanted to share that Preach. and say that the Lord can physically reach out and he can touch you yes. and he can keep you from falling off that porch. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Thank Preach. you, Lord. Mm. Preach. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Janera, yeah, I, I told my whole family I got two guardians. 
My guardian angels got gunshot wounds. They got bandages. <laughs> and Dr. Hobby, you remember they told us younger, if you go into a bar, your angels leave you. Yes. You yes. remember that? Yes. yes. I'm gonna tell you that's a lie. That's a lie. Yes. I'm tell you straight up, that is a lie. In right. fact, they they got double duty in the bar. If you're behind, <laughs> shouldn't be in there in the first. You shouldn't be there in the first place. No. But yeah. No. That's. Yep. Y'all about, I'm finna go Kojic when y'all get off this phone today. I'm just gonna run around <laughs> my house. Like, I don't love, God is good. Can we plan on being at the Tree of Life? Can this family? Yes, sir. Yes. Ah. Yes, sir. Anyway, love y'all madly. Let's be kind to somebody this week. Yeah, let's, God is good all the time. Let's love on somebody this week. Uh, but y'all got guardian angel stories. If y'all got started, we wouldn't be able to get off this thing. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Uh, Hobby, we're going to name it uh, uh, Tree of Life Live. Ah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is, Tree of Life Live. <laughs> oh, anyway, those of y'all that are going to memorial service, please take the love from a family worship with you. Put your arms around them, embrace them. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't say nothing, though. When people are grieving, the dumbest words come out of your mouth. Yes. Please give them hugs. Yeah, you tell them you love them, but don't try to be no preacher to somebody that's lost somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just quietly love on them, and then uh, at the tree of life, it all it will all be sorted out. It's I'm planning right. on seeing y'all in heaven. Y'all have a uh, East Coast people. Y'all been finished eating. Y'all eating on dessert and chilling. <laughs> West Coast people. Y'all still hungry. <laughs> And in the middle, y'all been eating in the balcony. So we love you. We'll see you next week this time. God bless you. Okay. Have a good one. See you, Gloria. Okay. Have a good one, darling. All right, Doc. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you. Much bye. love. Bye. Brother Alfred, much love, baby. Nancy, God bless y'all. Y'all have a good one.